Sport is a very important part of Australian culture. It provides enormous emotional, psychological and physical benefits for millions of Australians. It is really important that all Australians wishing to participate in sport can do so in a way which takes care of their health and welfare and keeps them safe. Even for very experienced medical practitioners, concussion can be challenging when it comes to diagnosis and management. There are no blood tests which can diagnose concussion. There are no medical imaging scans which can reliably diagnose concussion. It's very important that when dealing with someone with concussion, we look across a range of clinical domains, including the history provided by the athlete, perhaps the corroborative history provided by those who witnessed the event, and then a careful physical examination which takes into account numerous aspects of physical and cognitive function. It's important that after any concussion, there is a period of rest, both from exercise and sport, but also for learning and any other complex tasks that the brain may have to do. So with adults, we wait 24 hours for them to rest, and then what happens is there's a graded return to contact sport over anywhere between a week to 10 days. It's important that we're more conservative with children in that we uh, don't allow them to get back to playing some sport for a good 24 to 48 hours to let the brain rest, but also then getting them back to uh, returning to contact or collision sports for at least 14 days after resolution of their symptoms. Before returning to sport, all patients should have a clearance from a doctor regarding their ability to return. I think recognising that mechanism of injury is an important part of uh, diagnosing concussion. Uh, direct blows to the head are an obvious source of concussion, but blunt trauma to any part of the body that results in uh, the transmission of force to the head and the cervical spine is something that we can't ignore. Really the key principles for me are uh, to assess the severity of concussion uh, and to ensure that there is an appropriate plan for that patient. It may be as simple as having them going home with uh, a loved one, someone who is in a responsible position to be with them, to observe them. Uh, they clearly shouldn't be doing things like driving, riding a bicycle, operating equipment, making major decisions. It's important that supervision is part of the recovery process. It's understanding that sometimes the symptoms are delayed. Giving them the opportunity to have some very simple pain relief, something like Panadol, is okay, but we really should avoid any stronger pain relievers, any sleeping medication, any anti-inflammatories. So the pathophysiology of concussion isn't completely understood. Animal and functional imaging studies suggest that there's a series of metabolic changes that result in impaired neuronal function. The long-term consequences of concussion are complex and a stool part of ongoing research. However, there is concern about the long-term possibility of degenerative neurological damage. And we need to ensure that we have both the measures and the understanding and the research around that and allowing safe recovery times is part of that process. The Australian Institute of Sport, the Australian Medical Association, the Australasian College of Sport and Exercise Physicians and Sports Medicine Australia have a clear and unequivocal focus on ensuring the safety and welfare of all Australians participating in sport. Bringing these four organisations together in the Concussion in Sport Australia initiative gives all Australians confidence and clarity when it comes to dealing with the important issue of concussion in sport.